wormholes, particle physics, extra dimensions. Are the wonders of so-called reality really what they appear to be? Or do we exist in an elaborate hologram? Is our universe the result of random activity or the result of intelligent design? If a creator was involved, can we discover him through our perception of divine order? This is Into the Multiverse with Josh Peck. Thank you for joining us yet again on another episode of Into the Multiverse. Uh, I'm very excited because we have Pastor Carl Gallup's back with us, so I don't want to spend too much time on an introduction. But uh, thank you so much for coming back on the show. The last it's episode we did was phenomenal, and Thanks. I hated having to end the episode uh, because we could have just we, we could have gone Christina, longer and longer. Me. I appreciate <laughs> oh, it, good to have Josh. You back. God bless you. God thanks bless for you. Me. Yeah. Uh, okay, so well, I asked the the question last yes. time, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let you. Okay, well, getting right back into <laughs> yeah. the the powers behind the thrones, uh, the yeah. gods. Uh, what about the, what's, what's the deal with the Nakash and yeah. the fallen angels? And okay. <laughs> yeah, the title Satan. is Gods and Thrones, and then the subtitle is Nakash, Forgotten Prophecy, and the Return of the Elohim. Yes. Yeah. And the last one, we I kind of gave an overview of the whole book, and then this explanation of what does it mean, the return of the Elohim. Yes. And, 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 um, uh, so now you're asking about nakash, nakash. That is a Hebrew word, mm -hmm. and it literally translates to serpent or the serpent. Mm -hmm. But that word is also deeply connected in the Hebrew language with the idea of the the metaphorical presentation of a person mm -hmm. who is very artful, very deceptive, very manipulative, and even the Hebrew word says like a diviner even, and, mm. and one that can kind of, a discerner, one that knows more, can kind of see beyond. In other words, mystical, almost magical, mm -hmm. nachash, like a serpent. Now, now think about this. We use our English word, not serpent so much, but snake, mm -hmm. in the same way. I can say, oh, there's a snake on the ground. Mm -hmm. What kind of snake? Is it a rattlesnake? Okay. Or, I can share something with you in confidence and you go tell it to the world. I can say, you know what? She's a snake. Mm. Right, she deceived yeah. me. She hurt me. She lied to me. What a snake in the grass. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. We use the same word, mm -hmm. but it depends upon the context. Mm. Is she a literal snake? Mm. No. Do I even think that? No. <laughs> but I'm using that metaphorical sense. You see? Yeah. Nakash has that very same mm -hmm. connotation. And one of the things that I point out in this, in, in this is when we get to the garden is the first place we're introduced to the serpent. Mm -hmm. Now, so we ask ourselves, and I, I have several chapters on this. Man, we could do a two-hour show on this alone, but yeah. let, me just, let me just dive off into a little bit, whet the appetite of your viewers. Sure. When we get to that garden scene, here's, and I'm not, listen, I'm not trying to to make light of what the scripture says. If you'll hang in here with me, you'll see the context. But what we're told is a talking snake came to a woman, convinced her to eat a piece of fruit, and everybody's going to hell for it. Yeah, it's usually what we hear in Sunday school. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But now there's a beauty in that metaphor, too. Mm -hmm. But, but you know, I just kind of gave it away. So is that real? Is it a metaphor? And people say, oh, you don't take it literally. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. God's word doesn't always say um, excuse me, God's word doesn't always mean what it says, yeah. but it always means what it means. Right, exactly. For example, when Jesus said, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood, mm -hmm. if you're going to follow me, did, does the Bible it mean what it literally, says, yeah. or does it mean what it means, <laughs> and what it means? Okay, yeah. so when we come to the garden, could it have been that somehow a snake started talking <laughs> to Eve, and she ate a piece of fruit, and everything just fell, and we're all going to die and go to hell, and this, the whole world is thrust into corruption and sin and disease and death. It could be. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, you can take it literally if you want, mm -hmm. but it matches from there all the way through to the book of Revelation. We find that serpent again, and he's not a talking snake. That's it's right. Satan. Mm -hmm. That's it's right. And the serpent is Satan. Mm -hmm. That's what Revelation says. So the back of the book tells us, the front of the book, mm -hmm. defines. And so what we find throughout the Bible, Old or New Testament, we never hear of Satan being presented as a living animal again, or, right. or, a, or a snake, that, or, or a being that turned into a snake. Never. Mm -hmm. Plus, we hear of trees as metaphors throughout the Bible. We yeah. hear the word yeah. fruit as metaphors throughout yep. the Bible. Mm -hmm. So what we are now facing when we look at this is that Hebrew word nachash, mm -hmm. probably not a literal talking snake. Right. Mm -hmm. 
for those that want to just insist it's literal, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. When we all get to heaven, we may find out I'm completely wrong about this, but I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Because again, I, 36 scholarly commentaries and my word studies and Greek and yeah. Hebrew word studies and comparing Genesis to Revelation and everything in between, what we wind up with is this truth. Something desperately profane and wicked happened in the garden. Mm -hmm. Now, my book reveals what that more than likely was. I can tell you in Ezekiel 28, when mm -hmm. God speaks to Satan, and he says, I created you as the, as the most beautiful being, an anointed cherub, and he says, and I placed you in the garden. Mm -hmm. See, he says, but I cast you out as profane. Mm -hmm. You ought to look up that Hebrew word profane, and I do it in here, it's nasty. He said, you did something nasty in the garden. And I cast you out. And then you move just a few chapters over and you run into Genesis 6. Mm -hmm. And then we hear about the sons of God, B'nai Elohim, mm -hmm. is the Hebrew, fallen Elohim, that somehow come unto the daughters of men. Mm -hmm. And something happens there. And I, and I deal much more in detail with what that probably was and is and everything. But I'm just saying for the sake of this, this time, mm -hmm. something happens there. Watch. From the garden to there, the Bible says, God says, all flesh is now corrupted. Mm -hmm. And he pushed the reset button. Yeah. And he destroyed it all. I don't think it was because a talking snake right. caused a woman to eat a piece of fruit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was some nasty, nasty stuff going on that was corrupting everything that God had created in beauty. And the head of all of that corruption mm -hmm. was Satan. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Now, if I had time, I could go into deep word studies and reveal to you what, when Peter addresses mm -hmm. that, I'm just going to give your audience a hint. In Second Peter, mm -hmm. there's a, he, he says in there what happened. It's astounding. I mean, I remember when I did research for this, I saw that. I said, that's been there the entire 30 years of my ministry. I never saw that. Hmm. Peter says it. Paul says it in 2 Corinthians. And it's, it's, it's amazing what is being left out of preaching and teaching the mm -hmm. supernatural realm, the supernatural, and how nasty the fall is mm -hmm. and how perverted. Look at the perversion around us. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Look Hang what's on. happening with transgenderism and gay marriage and homosexuality and the perversion of fornication and mm -hmm. adultery and pornography and children and pedophilia, yes. mm -hmm. yes. sex robots, rape robots, child sex robots they're making so people can do this. It's becoming so perverted, so mm -hmm. wicked that we can't even fathom it. Yeah. And in the midst of that is the collapse of nations, the attack of Israel, the collapse of borders, the rising of terror. I mean. I'm not trying to paint a terrible picture here, but I'm just saying we're living in prophetic times and the gods behind the thrones are manipulating most of this. God's going to bring his judgment on them in the end. But this is where we are. Nachash is behind it all. He is the prince of the demon, the demonic realm, the fallen Elohim. And he is in the process of trying to become the God of this world and the God, he says, the God of gods, which means mm. he thinks he's going to own the whole divine realm as well. I don't know what he thinks he's going to do with Yahweh. Yeah. He thought he had him, he caught him in the flesh one mm. time on the earth. <laughs> if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. He put him on the cross thinking, I think he was so arrogant he thought he'd killed God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then the resurrection blew his mind. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying oh, yeah. now? You get it? You get the picture? So that's when Paul said, please understand, your battle's not against flesh and blood, but it's against powers of wickedness, unseen realm, and principalities, thrones. This is, this is where we are. This is what's happening. This is a message that the church is missing out on. And I want the church to know not only what's really happening, but the last four chapters ends with very positive stuff about here's your eternal destiny. Here's what's going to happen. Here's your part in it. Absolutely. And we're going to talk more about that, where all of this is headed and how it connects with today's headlines when we come back right after this. The world consists of vast cultures with stories that constantly connect their gods with the inner earth. And not just their gods, but reptilian races of hybrid entities. We're talking superhumans, strange animal creatures, or what the Book of Giants refers to as monsters. When you're dealing with the areas around the world where 
so much myth, legend, oral tradition, and belief. There's always an embracing of the underworld. The earth is actually dynamic, which according to the Bible, there is supernaturalism, there are entities, there are creatures, there are beings. If you were gonna hide something and keep something secret, there's two places to do it. One is in the deep, deep oceans. The second place is a labyrinth, a network of tunnels which go deep underneath the earth. There was truth to this idea that this race called the Vril Yah had been existing under the earth since the days of the Great Flood in the antediluvian world. The belief of the Vril Yah and of the power of Vril was actually so prominent among German occultists that it gave birth to a secret society called the Vril Society. The Nazi expedition to Shambhala originally started in Greenland with the Edda. The Edda were ancient Nordic writings describing a hollow earth. They went there to see if they could find further details or information. They really, this was the top of their agenda. They had to find this opening. When I read Admiral Byrd's description of, of things that he saw and, and, and how it felt going into this abyss type of opening, there are too many descriptions in there uh, of things that he saw that line up with current um, quantum physics uh, understanding. The underworld of our people very similar to the Cherokee stories, the Creek stories, the Maya Incan stories of underworlds where there is completely different civilizations that lived under there. The Watchers, the angels who kept not their first estate, according to Peter, are kept in chains in Tartarus until the judgment. Tartarus in Greek mythology is as far below Hades as the earth is below heaven. They've been literally priming the world for the greatest deception of all time. And we are fast approaching that time right now, according to the Bible. We've been talking to filmmaker Justin Fall about his brand new documentary release, Hollow Earth Chronicles. In this unprecedented film, Justin interviews a never before assembled all-star cast of biblical scholars and experts, including Dr. Thomas Horn, L.A. Marzulli, Steve Quayle, Derek Gilbert, and many more who collectively reveal how the concept of a hollow earth inspired some of the worst crimes against humanity in recent history, and how understanding the hollow earth is key to deciphering modern biblical prophecy. Skywatch TV is proud to announce the Hollow Earth special offer. When you order Hollow Earth Chronicles exclusively at the Skywatch TV store, you'll also receive Astrobiology and the Vatican ET Connection. In this full-length DVD presentation, the late internationally acclaimed author, Chris Putnam, walks you step-by-step step through the Vatican's astonishing plan for the arrival of an alien savior, one whom the prophet Daniel foresaw as an alien god. Plus, you'll also receive Forbidden Secrets of the Labyrinth by Mark Flynn. In this phenomenal work, you'll discover for the first time the true identity of the object worshipped by modern Freemasons, the elite's plan to secretly replace the world's financial currency with an antichrist system, the coming resurrection of the false god Apollyon in the very near future, and so much more. Sold separately, these items hold a retail value of $60. Yours now for only $29.95 plus shipping and handling. An unprecedented compilation of research materials that expose darkness and equips you with the information you need to face the future head on. The Hollow Earth Special Offer, available now at skywatchtvstore.com. Welcome back to Into the Multiverse. I'm so excited to jump back into this. We have uh, Pastor Carl Gallops with us. And I, I should have mentioned this in the beginning of the program. The book that we're talking about is Gods and Thrones. Uh, at the time of this viewing, I'm not sure if it's available yet because I don't know when this program is going to air. Uh, if it's not available, well, go, go to skywatchtvstore.com and check in there. If you don't see it in there, keep an eye on Skywatch TV. Uh, Skywatch TV has some uh, programs with uh, Carl Gallops and also Lieutenant Colonel Bob McGinnis on his new book. So you'll want to check those out and also Tom Horn's new book, Saboteurs. Uh, you'll want to check all those out. Uh, they'll, they'll be airing either now or in the very near future, depending when this, uh, when this airs. Uh, okay, so w w before we left off, we were going to talk about where, where all this is headed, what, what the enemy's plan is here. You know, we, we, we see the Dakash in the garden, uh, and then we even see in Revelation where it talks about the serpent of old. Uh, so 
how does that bring us yes. into today and how does that connect with uh, with the headlines today? What, what, how, how are these issues in the spiritual realm influencing yes. the human realm? Well, the quick story, and again, <laughs> the book lays it out with its theological foundation and then it tells the story in a format that I think everybody sitting on a pew will get. Yeah. Um, and I'm not talking down to folks. I'm just saying sometimes when you get into deep theology and Hebrew words and Greek words, sometimes they can get at a master's or doctor's degree <laughs> level. Some people just zone out. Yeah. But I just I tried to bring it to the table so that everybody could eat of this plate. Because yeah. to me, this is essential that the church understands this. Mm -hmm. You need to know what kind of world your kids and grandkids are growing up in and what they're up against spiritually. Because mm -hmm. most of life is spiritual. That's right. I mean, it really is. We're going to live a whole lot longer in the other dimension, <laughs> in the other realm than we yeah. are in this realm. Yep. And then when you read Ephesians 6, for example, and the powers behind the thrones and the warfare that's going, most of life is spiritual. Yeah. And so, uh, so but the bottom line is um, the story that I'm trying to get across here is that I go all the way back. Once we've settled the theology of the matter and the truth of the definition of words and things, I go all the way back to the garden and I just try to start there of saying, look, this was really bad. So, something really manipulative, nasty, profane, God mm -hmm. says, happened in the garden that then manifested itself, I believe, in, on steroids, if you will, mm -hmm. by the time you get to Genesis 6, now he's got a whole legion of fallen Elohim with him. Right. Apparently practicing something similar to mm -hmm. what may have happened in the garden, perhaps. I mean, and, and, and the whole thing causes corruption of the flesh, not just human flesh, although some translations say all humanity has been corrupted or something mm -hmm. like that. But, but the Hebrew word, all flesh, means humans and animals. Yeah. And then when you come to the flood and you see Noah, he's told to take certain animals on and the animals were brought to him. So yes. we have to assume that these were animals that the flesh wasn't corrupted yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it was on its way. Everything yeah. was on its way to total corruption. Now, God pushed the reset button, mm -hmm. destroyed it all except for Noah and the animals and started it over. Mm -hmm. Now, Here's the bottom line. I'm going to say something freaky. I'm sure you guys have dealt with this, but I want people to think about this. And I talk about this in the book a little bit. None of us, I know I'm old enough that people think I was there in Noah's day, but I wasn't. <laughs> I mean, I, I wasn't. I just let me assure you. But we don't have a clue, really, exactly every day. We know what God's Word says, mm -hmm. and we can discern doing mm -hmm. word studies and contextual studies from Genesis to Revelation. We can get a good idea. Mm -hmm. But we don't have a clue what they knew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me give you an idea. I just read today, mainstream media, we've just discovered some archaeological remains that shows that 3,700 years ago, which would have been just right after the flood, mm -hmm. that the Babylonians had a, an advanced form of trigonometry I saw mm -hmm. that puts ours to shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that was, that was way, like a thousand years before anything Greek or, yes. yeah. And they said with this, after they, now that they've discovered this, m mathematicians and archaeologists, scientists are just losing their minds. They're yeah. Saying, this is almost impossible. Mm -hmm. How could, we thought we were the enlightened ones. <laughs> so before the flood, see, everything was destroyed. Mm -hmm. What did they know? Yeah. What could they build? What could they do? Not only that, we're talk now we're talking about humans, but mm -hmm. don't forget what was one of the temptations in the garden. If you'll do this thing, Satan says, you can be like the mm -hmm. gods, mm -hmm. the Elohim. You can be like gods, or some translations say like God. And the reason is because Elohim, capital E, means God himself. Mm -hmm. Elohim, little e, in the English, means the gods or the divine realm. So right. different translations do it differently. Either way, he's saying you can be like God or like the gods. You yeah. can have the knowledge, all mm -hmm. the knowledge we have. Yeah, like superhuman. More yeah. Than, yeah. If, yep. you'll, if you'll do this thing, whatever mm -hmm. that thing is, and I deal in the scriptures, I mean in, in, in the, the book mm -hmm. with the scriptures, what I think probably it was based upon a lot of other scholarly uh, commentation, commentary on it. But he says, if you'll do this thing, you can have the same kind of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So we don't know exactly what kind of knowledge they had. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you this. Look at all the amazing knowledge we have now and the technology that's coming down the pipe. Yeah. Ge genetic splicing, CRISPR-Cas9. Answer this. 
You think the demonic realm didn't know that? Right. <laughs> of course they knew it. How mm -hmm. long they know it? Forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think there's anything new that we can no. discover Not that they, they wouldn't know. Right. I think some of the stuff we're discovering is being manipulated by that. Oh, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And, and, and maybe even being given yep. to mm -hmm. certain people by that. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, we, 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 we finally discover CRISPR-Cas9 and genetic editing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then we think the divine realm doesn't know about that? Mm -hmm. Of course the divine realm. That means they knew before the flood. Yeah. What was happening that all flesh was corrupt? And then get this, Luke 17, you know what Jesus said about the last days? He said, it's going to be just like the days of Noah. Yep. Just like that. And then he said, it'll be like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now think about that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Sodom and Gomorrah perverted sexuality. Yeah. Yes. The days of Noah corrupted flesh, perverted sexuality as well. Yeah. And then whatever happened in the garden and whatever happened with the sons of God coming to the daughters of men. I mean, just all of this perversion and corruption and Jesus declared in Luke 17, <laughs> before the return of the son of man, it'll be just like this. Mm. And look where we are now. Look mm. where we're going. Yeah. Again, Israel's back in the land, 70 years. Everything that's going on in the world, people, you know, important people think we're on the verge of World War III. I don't right. know if we are or not, but I mean, people, I mean, important leaders are saying that. Yeah. Syria has collapsed into an irreconcilable civil war. Mm -hmm. It's in a mess. Mm -hmm. Turkey is falling into a resurrected Ottoman Empire. Mm -hmm. The Islamic Caliphate of the, I mean, it's just, these are prophetically profound things and they're all converging in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of it, look at the sexual perversion. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's running havoc over the planet. Why? Technology, mm -hmm. internet. Mm -hmm. and, and so you have the pornography industry, but, but what does it fuel? Sex slave industry. That's right. Women and children all over the world, kidnapped, mm -hmm. taken away from the family, perverted, horrible things done to them. And, and then they're a part of the pornography. I mean, it just, it, just, it just reeks of a demonic invasion. Yeah. And so Nakash, Return of the Elohim, Forgotten Prophecies, that's another whole show, another whole thing. But, <laughs> yeah. but, but it's all here. And, but again, I know some of this might sound freaky to your listeners or even very negative, but it's, it's not. It's just a theological foundational understanding of what the biblical message really is. Mm -hmm. But it yeah. carries us into today, into the headlines to see what's really happening. Once you get that spiritual insight, then the last four chapters say, now, relax, take a <laughs> breath, enjoy your life and understand here's what lies waiting for you at the return of the Lord. Well, with about five minutes left, uh, you know, what would you want, what would you want people who are listening to all this and, and, and you know, maybe some people uh, know it and maybe some people this is brand new and, and think, well, geez, you know, Carl's right, <laughs> this is messed up. Uh, what, what, what is the hope? Because it's not going to be like this forever, yeah. of course. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we, we have a, a time of trial and tribulation and, yeah. uh, you know, however people want to define that. But, but there is hope that, that yes. lies ahead. Yes. And You're, I know five minutes isn't enough to cover it, but I'm going to... No, I could preach I, an I'm, hour I'm, sermon on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But here's the hope. The restoration of our divine nature. Mm -hmm. Peter says that, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Your divine nature is going to be restored. In other words, it will be... See... The only thing that keeps us humans from really enjoying life is death. Mm. Yeah. That's why we have clocks and calendars. Yeah. Because we only have so much time to get it done. That's we true. age in the mirror right before our eyes. It breaks our heart. It's like, it shouldn't be like this. Mm -hmm. You know, why can't, why can't we just live? Mm -hmm. Yet the Word of God says, for those that have trusted our Creator through Jesus Christ, that nature, that natural thing that God put in our heart and create, will be restored to us. Our immortality yeah. will be restored. We will be like the divine counsel, the Elohim that did not rebel, mm -hmm. that have existed eternally and will exist eternally with us, us with them, we with them. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 1 says, and here's what God is doing. Ephesians chapter 1 says, He is re restoring all things and He is bringing everything in heaven together with everything on earth under one head, even Jesus Christ. Mm. The upper family, the lower family, we will be joined together in mm -hmm. Jesus Christ for those that know him. Our divine nature will be restored. We will just live. Wow. And we will judge the angels. We will judge the nations. We will rule and reign with Jesus Christ. And that not only means over his earthly kingdom mm -hmm. and the paradise that it will be, but whatever else he decides to do from right. now forevermore. What if he decides to do all this again somewhere else and he allows us to be the 
divine counsel part of all of that to be his representatives in another whole creation. I don't know. I'm just, yeah. I'm just dreaming it's fun, now. No, it's fun to think Bible about that The Bible doesn't say yeah. that, no, but it does say we will rule and reign with yeah. him. Well, and, that brings and up it's going to go on forever. So Yeah, that brings up an interesting question, yeah. and, and this is something that I've wondered about, too. And uh, uh, if, if we're all destined to rule and reign, who are we ruling and reigning over if we're all ru- ruling and reigning? Yeah. <laughs> well, that th- and, and that's my point, is mm-hmm. that sometimes I look at that and I think, first of all, he will have his kingdom, mm-hmm. and it will not be, we, we will not be robots and puppets. Right. See, the angelic realm that did not rebel, they're mm-hmm. not robots, they're not puppets. I bet you they make mistakes. Mm-hmm. I, I don't <laughs> think they just thumb their nose at God and say, I'm going to do it my way. Yeah. That, then they would be a part of the fallen Elohim. Yes. Mm-hmm. But they make mistakes. Mm-hmm. They might overreact. God might say, <laughs> slay those 10 people and they slay 400. <laughs> you, know, I mean, you, know, you know, I don't know, but I'm just saying, but yet their heart you know what I'm saying? They, they're, they're not, not actively, robots. Yeah, they're, they're not right. rebelling. Yes. So, yeah. so there's ruling and reigning mm-hmm. over mm-hmm. that, that, over all sense. of that. Mm-hmm. Under the kingdom, we're immortal. We don't die, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and, and, and everything will be made new, the Bible says. No mm-hmm. more pain, no more death, no more crying. So our minds will be made new. We are made new in Jesus Christ on this earth, spiritually speaking. We're marked with a seal. But when we're with him, the Bible says that there will be no more pain or crying or death. We All things will be made new. Isaiah, that's Revelation 21, but Isaiah actually re- repeats that. And then it says, and even your minds will be made new. Wow. So you see, we will rule and reign. Part of that will be in the beginning when we're judging angels, mm-hmm. fallen angels, the, the Elohim. They will eventually be gods of nothing, mm-hmm. which will be really cool. Yeah. I mean, I'd be really glad when old smut face is told, <laughs> you're god of nothing, mm-hmm. and now to the pit you go, the yep. second death, whatever that means. If he actually literally ceases to exist or if he exists forever outside the presence of God, and that is death. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, he, yeah. he will die like a mere man is mm-hmm. what Psalm 82 yeah. says. So that's it. Ruling and reigning means all of that plus things we can't even imagine, which is why Paul said, look, you're mind can't conceive what mm-hmm. lies ahead. Your, your eyes have never seen, your ears have never heard. Remember, the hydrothermal vent shrimp right. becomes mm-hmm. a man or a woman, a person, <laughs> stands on the shore, sees seven billion people, and then not only that whole realm, but then looks up and sees the stars. Yeah. And the planet. There's even more. There's another dimension. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, it just goes on and on and on. Mm-hmm. And all along, way down, three miles deep, he thought that ecosystem was his entire universe. But there were dimensions of other realities all around him, all along. Mm-hmm. And that's what this book is about. It's just to help us to open our eyes to what this is about. It's not about being born, collecting up a bunch of stuff, mm-hmm. trying to get fame and fortune, and then dying. Mm-hmm. It's not what this is about. There's something much bigger to all of this. Satan doesn't want you to know it. Nachash doesn't want you to know it. He's still saying, no, just do it my way. I'll take care of you. You ain't not going to die. We'll handle that later. Mm -hmm. It's the same lie. Yeah. But it's still a lie. And eventually he will be Lord of nothing. Amen. Well, what a, what a fantastic note to end on, and there is hope ahead, and uh, and we're none of us are alone in it. Uh, Carl, I can't, I can't thank you enough for coming back on the show. This has been oh, an absolute my pleasure. blast. My pleasure. Amazing. Thank you. I Amazing. hope I wasn't too corny at times. Oh, I, I just oh. enjoy it. Oh, we love you. you. We, we, cor, corn and all, we <laughs> <Okay>. love you. <laughs> I have fun with you guys. Thank you. I'm honored to be here with oh, you. Oh, the honors yeah. are all ours, and we have fun with you, too. And uh, yeah. it, it, we're honored to have you mm-hmm. as our audience, and you know we love all you guys out there, too. So thank you for joining us for another episode of Into the Multiverse, and until next time, take care and God bless.